Hey everybody, it's Mr. Math Blog here. I hope you guys are doing well and that you're having fun with your awesome teacher here. So let's go ahead and begin. This is called Fractions in Simplest Form. This is Lesson 6.3. So the common core strand is uh, CC4NF1, which is so here we're going to extend our understanding of fraction equivalence and ordering. And so our essential question is, how can we write equivalent fractions that are in simplest form? So after this lesson, I think we'll, you guys will be pretty savvy on writing uh, fractions in simplest form. All right, so here we go. Let's do a problem here. Bonnie bought a pie and cut it into six equal pieces. Bonnie, Ginger, and Elizabeth each took two pieces of the pie home. Bonnie says that uh, she says that she and each of her friends took a third of the pie home. Is Bonnie correct? Well, let's see. Uh, so let's first cut the pie up into six equal pieces because Bonnie pot, bought the pie and cut it into six equal pieces, okay? And so Ginger took uh, two pieces, Elizabeth two took two pieces, sorry my tongue twister there, and then Bonnie took two pieces. So let's cut them up into two pieces each. And so what I'm going to do is let Bonnie be, take the two blue pieces, Ginger be the two red pieces, and Elizabeth will be the two purple pieces right there, okay? And so they're separated by this um, this um, this black line right here being cut that's cutting it up right there. So the pie is then divided into how many equal pieces? You got this blue piece, you got this red piece, and you got this purple piece. How many pieces are there? There's three equal size pieces right there. Okay, and these three colors show how to combine six size pieces to make three equal third size pieces. All right, so Bonnie is correct. Uh, Bonnie, Ginger, and Elizabeth each took a third of the pie home, okay? So uh, compare the model for two six and one third. How are these size related, okay? All right, well, two six, you guys. Bonnie got two of the six pieces. Ginger got two of the six pieces. And Elizabeth got two of the six pieces. And if you think about this being one piece, your purple piece, this being one piece, your red piece, and the blue piece is one piece. There's three pieces, and each one of them is one of them, so one-third. So two of the six is going to equal one of the three. Okay, And then note, you guys, if I took one-third and multiplied it by two over two, remember, that's just one right there. Okay, anything over itself equals 1. Okay, 10 over 10 equals 1. 25 over 25 equals 1. 2 over 2 equals 1. So when I multiply by 1, it won't change the value. It just makes it look different. It gives it a facelift. So 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So 1 third equals 2 6 because we multiplied both sides by 2. That's just another way to show equivalent fractions. Okay? All right, so what if Bonnie took three pieces of the pie home and Ginger took the other three pieces of the pie home? How could I combine the pieces to write a fraction that represents the part of that each friend took home? All right, well, let's just uh, let Bonnie be the red here and Ginger be the blue here. Okay, can you see that uh, the red is half the pieces and the blue is half the pieces? So Bonnie took three of the six pieces home and Ginger took three of the six pieces home, or each of them took half home. Okay, so each friend would be taking three six size pieces home. And note, three six size pieces equals half the pie. Or three six, this is how we write it as a fraction, three six equals half, one half right there. Okay? All right. Uh, so a simplest form of a fraction is in simplest form when the top and the bottom can't be any smaller. Do you guys remember what the top part is called and the bottom part is called? Well, I have that in here, but the top part is called the numerator. And the bottom part is called the denominator. So, um, and so as long as they're whole numbers, if it's the smallest numbers, um, then it would be called in simplest form. So here's one way. We can use models to write equivalent fractions in simplest form. So take, for example, these kind of fractions right here. Here I have eight equal pieces, and two of them are shaded. So this would be represented as two eighths. Here I have 10 equal rectangles here, and 6 of them are shaded, so this can be represented as 6 tenths. Here, this is 6 out of 12 right here, okay? Well, if I took um, those things up and divided them up, watch if I did this, you guys. If I took this guy and did a slice right there and a slice right there, 
it would make them into equal pieces. And then over here, if I did a slice down there, a slice down there, a slice there, a slice there, it would make those equal pieces. And here, if I just did a slice right in the middle, it would make them equal. Check it out. Okay, so that's what I did is I sliced them up right here. Now notice on this one here, there's four pieces now, and you're just looking at the red right here, and only one of them shaded, so this would be one out of the four, one-fourth. Here, there's one, two, three, four, five equal pieces, and three of them are shaded, so this would be three-fifths. So three-fifths is the same as six-tenths. Okay, here, there's two pieces here. There's this piece, and then there's this piece out of the red rectangles, and only one of them is being shaded, so this would be one over two, one-half. Okay, so what you can think of is this, you guys. To simplify the first one right here, I took these uh, eight little rectangles and I combined the eight size parts into groups of with two parts each. So here's two parts, here's two parts, here's two parts, here's two parts. So what I did is I divided the top and bottom by two. So if I divide two divided by two is one, eight divided by two is one because I combined them by equal two size pieces. Okay, so you can get one fourth that way. All right, or if I took this guy right here and, and if I grouped uh, uh, these guys, instead of grouping this one as one piece, one piece, one piece, I, I grouped them by this group of two, this group of two, this group of two. So I took the six out of ten and I cut them down by two. So I divided the six divided by two and the ten divided by two. It gets me three fifths. And check it out. Three of the five of these rectangles are shaded right here. We're over here. Six of the ten rectangles are shaded. Six tenths reduces to three fifths. Three fifths is in simplest form. Okay, it's the smallest. Okay, here, what I did here is I combined these 12 size parts into equal groups with six parts each. So this has six parts, this has six parts, and only one of these ones is shaded right here. So if I took six twelfths and I cut them down by groups of six, so six divided by six over 12 divided by six is one half right there. Okay? So some fantastic ways to reduce. So here's another way, you guys, to reduce fractions. You use common factors to write uh, six tenths in simplest form. So in other words, you can divide both the top and bottom by the same number other than one uh, to simplify this. So here we go. If we list the factors of the top number, which is the numerator, and the bottom number, which is the denominator, and then divide both the top and bottom by the common factors. So here's six and ten. Factors of six, one goes into six, two goes into six, three goes into six, and six goes into six. 1 goes into 10, 2 goes into 10, 5 goes into 10, and 10 goes into 10. Okay, it says other than 1, so I'm not going to look at the 1 right here. So here's a common factor. So if I divide the top and bottom by the common factor 2 right there, okay, that's going to get me uh, 6 divided by 2 over 10 divided by 2 is 3 fifths. This is my favorite way is to divide by common factors, although the picture way is pretty slick too. All right, let's try some, you guys. So write this in simplest form. Okay, 2 twelfths. Okay, what number goes into 2 and 12? Well, 2 does. So if you divide both the top and the bottom, it has to be the same number. 2 divided by 2, 12 divided by 2, I get 1 sixth. All right, let's try uh, 10 over 12. Okay, again, uh, 2 goes into 10 and 2 goes into 12. So if I divide the 10 divided by 2 and the 12, it has to be divided by 2 also, I get uh, 5 6. All right, how about, how about 8 twelfths? All right, well, if I divide those by 2, because I can divide those by 2 again, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 12 divided by 2 is, is 6. Now, notice that's not in blue, you guys, because that's not the answer. I can reduce this some more. Can you see that 2 goes into both those? So let's divide it by 2 once more, you guys. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so you get 2 thirds. All right, let me show you a different way, you guys. Uh, so 8, um, if you can recognize that there's a bigger number that goes into both 8 and 12, 4 goes into 8 and 4 goes into 12. So if I divide 8 divided by 4, it's a bigger factor. In fact, it's called the greatest common factor. We'll talk about that in a second. And then 12 divided by 4, the same number. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3, so 8 twelfths reduces to 2 thirds. Now you can divide it by 2 and divide it by 2 again. You'll be safe that way. You get 2 thirds no matter what. It just takes you a little bit longer if you don't see the greatest common factor. And that's okay, you guys. Sometimes I don't, and I just keep breaking them down. Here's another way, you guys. 
Okay, here's 12 equal rectangles right here. Okay, there's 12. Now I'm going to shade in eight of them. Okay, now I just put X's through them. So there's eight out of the 12 right there. Now, if you can recognize, I can group them in groups of four, you guys. So if I thought about here's one group, here's two groups. So two of the three groups are shaded. So this would be two thirds right there. Okay. So you can do pictures to reduce fractions also. Let's try one more. 12 over 16. I'm going to do it the factor way. Let's do factors of 12 and factors of 18. Here's all the factors of 12, all the numbers that go into 12. Okay, make sure I did it right. I make lots of mistakes. My students catch me all the time on mistakes. In fact, they catch me after the videos are made, and so I just have to put them in a little text box that I made a mistake. Okay, here's all the factors of 18. Did I get them all right? Okay, here's all the common factors, you guys. All right, you see that? I listed them in blue. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 6. Here's the greatest common factor, the biggest one, the greatest one, and I, it's going to be called the GCF, we'll learn later on. It's the greatest common factor. That's the number I'm going to divide both the numerator and the denominator with. So I'm going to divide the top and bottom by the GCF, 6. So 12 divided by 6 is 2, 18 divided by 6 is 3. All right, take care, everybody.